To put it simply, in our everyday lives, we can easily see microfluidic phenomena, even on our macro scale. Even a simple flower, which pulls water from its roots towards the stem, utilizes capillary action. This allows fluid to move, flow up, despite opposing forces such as gravity pulling the fluid back down. Here, we have three different setups using milk as a fluid medium, which, are, which we have marked red through food coloring. We have one control where a cookie is not submerged in any fluid. The two cookies used are Milano, which has a volume calculated to 3 inches cubed and a mass of 10 grams, where a Bordeaux cookie has a volume of 1 inch cubed and a mass of 7 grams. The density calculated through mass divided by volume shows that the Bordeaux cookie has a larger density than Milano. The importance of being able to calculate density for the two cookies has a critical role in observing the effects of capillary action. First, let's break down how the theoretical height of a fluid should rise through a body. We have to assume that the cookie has a rectangular cross section, as shown, where we can calculate the perimeter by adding the sides. Assuming a fixed surface tension gamma and a maximal contact angle, which will point all forces directly perpendicular to the surface. On the other side of the equation, the primary force to overcome is a gravitational force, which is calculated by the density times the gravity constant and the height of, flat, of rising fluid and multiplied by the surface area. What results is both the density and the surface area are inversely proportional to the height of the rising fluid, meaning that the denser cookie should have less fluid rising through the capillary action. So let's try this experiment to set up where both cookies are, are submerged in the same volume of milk and observe which cookie experiences more capillary action in the milk. While the experiment for the cookies is going on, let's quickly talk about surface tension. Let's quickly talk about surface tension. The surface tension of a liquid on a microfluidic scale is, mo is the most dominant force to consider due to the relative surface area versus volume of the liquid. However, on a macro scale, we could even see how the surface tension plays a role in the movement of fluid. Here we have some milk, and we'll simply add some food coloring. Notice how the food coloring stays in place as I add each drop. Now I'll add some detergent to the milk. Now when adding the milk to when I, now when adding the soap to the milk, the surface tension should drop due to the interaction of milk particles with the soap's hydrophobic compound, thus breaking up the milk. As the milk fat becomes more hydrophobic, it should elicit more movement from the milk, which is shown by the movement of color. Let's quickly go back to the submerged cookies and observe which had more fluid rise. The Milano is showing to have more milk rise up from the bottom as we expected. 